What's going on guys? In this video we're about to break down the spoilers for My Hero Academia chapter 336 in which there was yet another twist in the UA traitor storyline. During the chapter last week it was heavily implied that Invisible Girl had been the traitor this whole time and those of you who follow me on Twitter will know that I didn't think she was a good choice. My reasoning was that Hagakure has always been one of the most irrelevant background students about on the same level as Koda and her actually being the traitor due to her invisibility it seemed almost too easy to be satisfying. However, that being said, the spoilers for chapter 336 have now made the whole situation a lot more interesting and in this video I'll explain why this latest twist makes perfect sense. Just before we get into it though, don't forget to sub to the channel if you haven't already and drop a like as well if you want to see more content like this. Okay, so the title of this chapter is Villain and according to the leaks it begins with Deku and Bakugo training. Bakugo is testing out his new cluster attack that he mentioned last week and this involves him producing multiple spheres of sweat and then exploding them simultaneously. For that reason he's wearing his winter costume in this chapter to increase sweat production even though in the manga right now it's technically spring. Some of the other students were also training in preparation for their inevitable fight with All for One with Shoto trying to improve control over both sides of his power. As this is going on Kaminari says to Mineta that their chance of winning the war is greater than ever considering that Shigaraki was significantly weakened after Star and Stripe deleted a bunch of his quirks. On top of that Giganto Makia is currently asleep and imprisoned but Bakugo claims that Denki is being way too optimistic. Although the heroes got a slight advantage thanks to what Star and Stripe did, Bakugo points out that All for One is still impossible to find, Shigaraki was already weakened before he faced Star and he still won, and finally, the villains likely have multiple plans and are just waiting for the right moment to attack. Because of all this, Bakugo believes the best thing they can do right now is just to prepare for the villains to strike, but on the flip side, Deku says he wants to go out into the wild and search for AFO. After that whole discussion is over, the chapter moves on to Hagakure in the forest as she observes three people talking from a distance. The three people in question are Aoyama and his parents and remember, ever since the war really kicked off, the parents of UA students have been living on campus alongside their kids. As Invisible Girl watches on, one of Aoyama's parents says that he has to obey because someone is giving them instructions again. They tell their son that he just needs to keep doing what he's always done as the bad things he's been up to have been disguised as everyday actions and are impossible to trace. His mother states that they need to keep obeying all for one or else they'll be killed but Aoyama starts crying and basically says he doesn't want to do it. His parents quickly reply that they're not doing it because they like it but it's way too late to go against AFO. Meanwhile Hagakure has just been there completely invisible listening to everything they're saying and after hearing what they said she obviously realizes that Aoyama must be the traitor and she starts thinking back to the villain attacks on the USJ and on the training camp in season 3. Apparently the reason she followed him into the forest this chapter was that ever since the war he's been quite depressed and even after Deku came back to school he hasn't smiled once. Consequently she followed him to see if he was okay and in doing so she's now accidentally stumbled across his darkest secret. As the Aoyama family continue to talk we learn that back in the day their son was born quirkless which is why they made a deal with AFO in the first place. To me this makes perfect sense for so many reasons with the first one being that All for One has been using this exact same business model for decades. We saw in a flashback to his younger days that he would recruit followers by either giving them quirks or taking them away and that's how he was able to gain a ton of friends over the years. In addition to that, the whole storyline with Lady Nagant showed us that when he gives someone a quirk he can somehow booby trap that person so that they literally explode once they start going against him. Therefore my theory right now is that as part of the deal they made with AFO, Aoyama's parents were booby trapped exactly like Lady Nagant and All for One can detonate them at any time if Yuga doesn't do what he says. The reason why this traitor reveal is so much better than it being Invisible Girl is that there's actually been a ton of setup when it comes to this character. For a long long time Aoyama has been sus for varying different reasons whether it be his weird coded messages to Deku, him going missing during the USJ attack or the fact that he's canonically described as someone who doesn't go out of his way to make friends. Those are definitely all things that have contributed to Aoyama's mysteriousness and knowing what we know now we can recontextualize some of the things he said. One example is that in chapter 168 he tells Deku that they're alike and in hindsight you could argue that this is Horikoshi planting a clue that they both receive power that derives from All for One. A different example is that when Midoriya left UA everyone else was making phone calls or inquiries so they could locate Deku and bring him back but Aoyama was the only student to offer a different point of view. Rather than bringing Midoriya back Aoyama implied that maybe they don't need to worry so much because Deku is with the adults which to me was his subtle way of discouraging everyone from going after Izuku. He likely didn't want Midoriya to return so he could avoid this exact situation that he's in now cause now that Midoriya is at UA, All for One is giving him orders to betray his classmates once again. 
Besides this, Aoyama receiving a quirk from AFO explains why Naval Laser is so incompatible with his body because he was never built to have this power. He mentioned in Season 4 how without his support item, the laser used to sometimes burst out randomly, not to mention that he would often have a bad reaction when it came to using it. Given that different people react in different ways to receiving a power that isn't theirs, Yuga struggling in this way was some great foreshadowing from Horikoshi for the reveal that we got in this chapter. Another clue worth considering is that during the My Hero Academia exhibition earlier this year, we got this image of a sad Aoyama sitting in front of a twisted looking monster, which yeah, I mean, this was a massive indication of the traitor reveal. His expression in this image implied he wasn't happy about the situation, and now that we have the full context, we know that he's depressed since he's only doing this to save his own parents. That's why during the forest training camp he did still go against the villains and save his friends, or at least save Tokiyami, and the reason he did that is because in his heart he's still a good person, it's just that he's been put in this impossible situation where he either has to do bad things or his parents will explode most likely, so yeah, it's not easy. Now back to the spoilers, Hagakari realizes that she needs to warn a teacher, but suddenly she sees someone else approaching. Meanwhile, Aoyama is still crying to his parents, saying that he's been suffering this whole time and dedicated himself to this persona so he wouldn't be so consumed by the guilt. Back when AFO was arrested in Kamino, he thought that he could finally live peacefully with his friends, but as we know, he was wrong. His parents apologize, and Yuga says that he did all of this to protect them as he didn't want them to die. They then ask him to keep protecting them, but it's at this moment that Deku arrives, having been brought over by Invisible Girl. Midoriya says that Hagakure told him something about the traitor and asked if this is true, but Aoyama's parents tried to play dumb. At the same time, Yuga himself is crying non-stop while looking at Deku and blames himself for not saying anything when they rescued him. In case you might have forgotten, what Aoyama is referring to here is when Class 1A rescued Deku from Dictator and also from himself, and during that interaction, literally every member of Class A said something to Izuku except for Aoyama. Even the most irrelevant members of the class at least got to say one word, whether it be Koda, Seru, or Ojiro, or Invisible Girl, everyone said something except this guy. And as we've established, this is partly because he secretly didn't want Deku to come back, but also probably because he was feeling guilty. Midoriya says that he went into the forest to search for Aoyama, since he realized something was wrong, and this is when the traitor properly breaks down and starts confessing everything he's done. He calls himself a disgusting villain and reveals that it was him who leaked information about the training camp and the USJ, while Deku just has this huge look of disappointment on his face. The final panel of this chapter is a flashback to the cheese he left on Midoriya's balcony in season 4, and that cheese spelled out the words, I know. Considering this chapter has given things a whole new context, it's almost a certainty that this message from Aoyama was him confirming his knowledge about one for all. Finally, we should probably address why Nezu got it so wrong when it came to who the traitor might be. According to him, none of the kids displayed any weird behavior since being in the dorms, and this was the main reason why he assumed that none of them could be the spy. The problem is that until this chapter, the traitor never needed to do anything since being in the dorms, since historically the spy has only leaked information when necessary to allow the villains to bypass UA security. This happened during the USJ when the villains received the teaching schedule, and it also happened during the forest training camp when the villains also received the GPS coordinates of the secret location. So clearly, Aoyama has been doing this stuff when needed, but he's not the traitor all the time, he's not constantly doing bad things. So the fact that he wasn't suspicious in the four months since being in the dorms, that didn't really prove anything. In reality, he was able to go about his daily life without causing too much suspicion, and it's only now that he's being called upon again. Anyway, let me know in the comments down below, what do you think of this reveal? Do you prefer it to Invisible Girl or do you think it should have still been her? I mean, I'm very happy with the way this has turned out. I definitely did not want it to be Invisible Girl. It just felt way too boring. Uh, but this, you know, the reasoning we get for Aoyama, the hints we've gotten, it just makes perfect sense. I also think that on top of all of this, there is still one more traitor to be revealed. And that person is Nezu, because if you see my video on this, I am like 99.999% sure that Nezu is a creation of Dr. Graki and All for One. So if that's the case, you could have Aoyama who is the traitor that knows he's the traitor, and you could have Nezu who's the traitor who has no idea that he is. As always, if you haven't already, then be sure to smash that sub button for more videos like this, and until the next one, peace out.